Your Excellency, President of the 72nd Session of the General Assembly, Your Majesties, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends. Mr. President, I wish to congratulate you on your election as the President of the 72nd Session of the General Assembly and your predecessor, Mr. Thompson, for his commitment and effort to accelerate the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. Mr. President, you could not have chosen a better and more relevant theme given the times that we are living in for the pursuit and maintenance of peace and the promotion of development in solidarity lie at the core of the mission of the United Nations and its entire system. Since the signing of the United Nations Charter 72 years ago and in subsequent conventions, resolutions and declarations adopted over the decades, member states have sought to actualize the unquenchable human hope for peace justice and progress, Mr. President. But the current global development agenda differs in significant, significant ways from all those that preceded it. It is ambitious, revolutionary, transformative, universal, and encompassing every single facet of human life. For its success, this agenda demands a radical, unprecedented paradigm shift in every sphere of human life. Mr. President, we cannot halt or reverse the continued destruction of our natural habitat or the rise in global atmosphere temperature without a change in contemporary production and consumption patterns. This has been confirmed by scientific evidence. This has been confirmed by scientific evidence. We cannot hold or reverse the persistent widening gap between the rich and the poor among our nations without deeper international cooperation and genuine reform of the existing inequitable international system. The current system is inherently structured to enrich a few and impoverish the many. It cannot therefore deliver on a key aspiration and watchword objective of the 2030 Agenda that of leaving no one behind. Mr. President, for us in Africa, the current antiquated system perpetuates a historic injustice, one that can never ever be justified today. The 2030 agenda represents new wine, and we call for a new wine skin, lest we ruin the new wine. It is for this reason that I reiterate my country's unflinching support for the African Common Position on Security Council reform, commonly known as the Ezulwini Consensus. Mr. President, the overwhelming majority of us have accepted that we need to reform the current system in order to improve, but not destroy it. Nonetheless, the negotiations and process intended to yield the accepted reforms 
are painstakingly slow. We are left to wonder, justifiably so, whether those who enjoy and sometimes abuse the power and privileges of the current setup are sincere in interlocutors in these discussions. Mr. President, it is axiomatic that we harvest what we sow. Yet by some strange logic, we expect to reap peace. Reap peace when we invest and expend so much in treasure and technology in war. According to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, Global military expenditure in 2016 amounted to approximately $1.6 trillion. In the same year, according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, overseas development assistance amounted to approximately $142.6 billion. Those mega investments in ever more lethal weapons and more sophisticated war machinery have not resulted in greater peace or security. Instead, we have witnessed heart-rending suffering and misery and increased mass movements of people fleeing wars and armed fleeing wars and armed conflicts. This trend, Mr. President, should be halted for the benefit of humanity. We believe a different and better world is possible. In proposing and inviting us to focus on prevention, preventive diplomacy, peaceful resolution of conflicts, peace building and sustaining peace, the Secretary General is pointing us in that desirable direction. We must also seriously tackle the multifaceted and complex root causes of conflicts, including en enduring poverty and deprivation, unequal access to resources, the denial of the rights to self-determination of peoples and interference in the internal affairs of other states, among other causes. Mr. President, the continued denial of the right to self-determination to the peoples of Western Sahara and of Palestine who are living under colonial and foreign occupation is immoral and an urgent issue for those seeking peace and security in our time. The Security Council has assumed its charter responsibilities and has passed numerous resolutions. What remains is the enforcement and implementation of those resolutions. We call on the Security Council to demonstrate its authority in ensuring the holding without much further delay of the independence referendum in Western Sahara. We expect the Security Council to work closely with the African Union, its proven partner for peace, on the African continent in this effort. The ever deteriorating situation and the continued suffering of the Palestinian people should spur the Security Council to renewed time-framed efforts to bring about the two-state solutions solution already defined in numerous 
General Assembly and Security Council resolutions. Development and peace are conjoined and cannot be separated. My country has embraced the 2030 Agenda as an integrated and comprehensive approach to address the myriad and complex national and global challenges in solidarity and in cooperation with other stakeholders. Zimbabwe was honored to be among some 40 plus countries that participated in the voluntary national review at the 2017 high-level political forum in July. We were and still are pleased to share with other countries our experiences and to learn from others their experiences in implementing the Sustainable Development Goals. We recognize the need for beneficial partnerships, both within and outside our national borders. One of our key partners is the United Nations system, with which I'm happy to note we work very closely. I wish in this regard to welcome the Secretary General's initiative to ensure that the support of United Nations country teams will be guided by national priorities. This will ensure national ownership and leadership of the development processes as well as the sustainability of development projects and programs. This, Mr. President, is what we are experiencing in Zimbabwe. My country is an unflinching advocate for the respect of the sovereignty and independence of countries. We therefore strongly defend and respect the right of each country to take decisions in exercising its sovereign rights. We cannot, however, remain silent when those decisions impact or have the potential to negatively affect our own welfare. And on this, may I say, some of us were embarrassed, if not frightened, but what appeared to be the, bib the return of the biblical giant called Goliath. Are we having a return of Goliath to our midst who threatens the extinction of other countries? And may I say to the United States President, Mr. Trump, please blow your trumpet. Blow your trumpet in a musical way towards the values of unity, peace, cooperation, togetherness, dialogue, which we have always stood for and which are well read in our very sacred document, the Charter of the United Nations. Upon those values, each nation can build its greatness including the United States. And it's a greatness, the greatness in recognizing those values, unity, peace, cooperation, dialogue, togetherness, 
that we would want to be guided by the United States and not by the promise of our damnation. Damnation we shall always resist, no matter whence it comes. We have resisted it when it was in the form of imperialism as we fought for our own independence, our own culture, our own sovereignty to, to be masters of our own destiny. That's why we call ourselves free today. It is because the monster of imperialism was defeated by us. Bring us another most monster by whatever name, he will suffer the same consequences. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, climate change is a present reality, and so are its effects and impacts. Climate change is global. We cannot remain silent when a major economic power in the world or any other state for that matter decides to abandon the Paris Climate Change Agreement. And that's the United States, the great United States, Mr. Trump's United States. Let us work together. Climate change is a reality. It is vital that we all play our part in keeping with the provisions of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in order to halt the inexorable march towards the destruction of that upon which our own existence depends. I want on behalf of my country to express our condolences. Puerto Rico as well as to countries that have been afflicted by other other afflictions that have visited them. And there are many in this part of the world. We say so we are very sorry. And we appeal for the rest of us who have not suffered similar afflictions to go to the assistance of these who have suffered in that very horrific manner. Look at the television today and tell me whether you can say where Puerto Rico is geographically. Completely wiped out by a hurricane. We are very sorry. As I conclude my remarks, it is worth reminding each other that the world today by its very interconnectedness demands more, not less, solidarity, more, not less, cooperation and dialogue, more, not less, multilateralism. We have brought more and more issues under the global agenda and within the global discourse. This acknowledgement has found expression in the 2030 agenda and the sustainable development goals. Our survival and progress calls for reinforced solidarity, for partnerships and cooperation for development in unity, in cooperation, and in peace.
This is a call to which we all must respond positively and actively. The Zimbabwe is already doing so. I want to thank you.